So when I came in here and I was appointed chair, the first thing, first was to check uh, the organization's state of affairs financially, where are we? Mm. And uh, what we picked up was quite scary issues, quite, quite, quite scary issues. Uh, I picked up that, for example, the, the, the company had not been audited for the last three years. Wow. So right. what did that mean for you? Um... For me, that signals red, 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 red. Because if you don't audit, uh, you don't get a management report in terms of uh, the... You don't get a professional external independent opinion. So I meaning even commercially, you can't be stronger because you can't approach people outside to be no, able no, no, to... No, no, not necessarily. Them. Not necessarily. Look, uh, not necessarily. We will get to that part whether the TV station did have the right IT infrastructure and the right instruments to be able to demonstrate to its client whether it was uh, delivering asset purports. Yes. Uh, that's another subject. When, when we went in there, because we, we did commission a review of that, and uh, we picked up that uh, the channel was quite lacking in that respect. Uh, but it's now fixed. We, we, we've dealt with that. We yes. had to bring in you know, uh, assistance from the new partners that we went into bed with. Uh, I will talk to that. Mm. The first thing that shocked us when we came in, uh, which was your, your initial question, was one, we picked up that we were sitting with a 14 million rands tax liability uh, with SARS. We picked mm. up that the company has not been submitting tax returns, it's not been making its VAT payments. Uh, to some extent, you were not making submissions and payments of your UIF, yet you were deducting from stuff. So this uh, talks was, to compliance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That compliance levels were quite questionable. So that was quite scary. And one had to take a view. Do I jump ship and get out of this? <laughs> <laughs> or, or do we stay and fix? And uh, we took the view, no, let's stay and fix, you know, because fortunately, uh, within that board, you have three people uh, who come from a strong business background. Myself, Peter Mabi, and, 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 and your current acting CEO, uh, Mr. Tabo Mdo. Mr. All right. With obviously varying uh, business experiences. You know, uh, Mr. Malife comes from the same industry that you guys are in. Yes. Uh, Mr. Mabi. Uh, is a farmer and at the same time is in the transport and taxi industry. I come from a logistics waste management background, so it was like, you know, an amalgamation of, which, which is a benefit to the channel, because uh, we'd look at things in that board rather from different perspectives. Uh, so that's what we picked up. Uh, we, 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 we picked up that your procurement processes we're not in compliance with, uh, uh, you know, corporate standards and, and even your, your, your government standards. Yes. Though you are not regulated in terms of the PMFMA, you know. Uh, but there are ethical issues, e.g., I mean, around procurement, that you, this is a public institution. Uh, it's, a, it's a non profit making organization. The ethics that needs to govern procurement, for example, are ethics wherein you are able to give, e.g., your security contract has just came to an end. Right. Under normal circumstances in a naturally well-run organization, you need to have been advertising, advertising that, that yeah. and be giving the people of Soweto who own security companies uh, an opportunity to, to bid for that. Uh, and you need to have an independent uh, uh, committee that basically adjudicates and decides on who gets given that opportunity with specifications written properly, you know, in terms of what are the security requirements and standards around which yes. uh, you would be measuring those individuals. Uh, have you been doing that as so to TV? No, you've not. Uh, is that correct? No, it's not correct. Mm -hmm. uh, you end up, for example, uh, with expensive services being rendered to you because you've not allowed the competitive bidding process. So, so that, that then renders so that, that. Those, those are, I don't want to go into... Into, into intrinsic into details, details, yes. So those are the kinds of things we picked up, that mm. your procurement was not in order, your compliance with SARS was not in order, 
uh, we, when we did your staffing ratios and benchmarked you against other, you know, commercially ran uh, platforms like you, we found that you are way out of line with 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 international norms. Yes, you are over bloated in terms of staffing. You're expensive. You spend almost sixty percent of the resources coming into the channel in staffing costs. And uh, when we looked at staff performance, uh, we found that. A number of your people are not coming to work, but they are earning salaries. That's what in that press statement we call ghost workers. Yes. You know, uh, uh, when we look at your production, we found that you've been repeating shows, your, your viewership has been declining. Uh, so, so it was that, very that, clear to us that... That speaks to governance oversight. Yeah. Uh, so it was clear to us at the board that, look, unless we do something, uh, this Titanic is going to hit the iceberg and it's going to collapse. You know, uh, you had the CASA issues that were pending where at any given point in time, had we not intervened, the CASA was going to take okay. the license away. You know. Uh, so now, with, with all that that you're describing, so what's the, what's the direction that you will... Well, the board took a view to say we need to intervene uh, decisively and save the channel. Uh, you, you need to understand that the people that have been assembled around that board are quite sentimental with the, with the property, so it's yes. TV. It's, it's, it's a brand that, that, that resonates with, with, with the township, and the township has a strong history. Yes. Uh, personally, I mean, I grew up in this township, so anything that has the Soweto brand, uh, I, would, I, would, I take it very personal, you know. Uh, and, and not only myself, a lot of Sovietans take it personal. Yes. You know? yes. uh, so the issue was, you know, do we run away and leave the ship to hit the iceberg or we step in? I've never run away from battles. You know, I come from a proud history of resistance. We fought yes. the apartheid regime. Uh, so this is like Kamanza so, Matani. Look, I mean, <laughs> uh, you can't run away from a battle, you know, when you've been trained, brought up to basically handle transformation. So the issue was, we have to transform. But we don't blindly transform driven by heart. No, mm. no, 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 no. We apply our minds. We, you know, we're skilled with business people. So we applied our minds. We looked at it. Where is the problem coming from? And that's when, for example, we engaged your then CEO. You know, we engaged her uh, in a lot of issues. And it's unfortunate that the, the, we were not getting any cooperation. Okay. Uh, hence, we had to suspend her. Okay. Because we had to choose between do we allow this ship to be driven in the fashion that it's being driven and it's going straight into the iceberg, or, or we take over the ship? I guess that's where some of these individuals have this whole hijack notion coming oh, from. Okay. All right. So we then took a view as the board to suspend the then CEO. Mm. And uh, we had to look amongst ourselves. Who of us would be available to basically uh, oversee this ship on a part-time basis, you know? Mm. So we then agreed that, so, look, the closest person to the action who understands broadcasting, broadcasting. is Mr. Tabo Malif, you know? He has had his thing with the SABC, he runs an outfit, Touch HD. He had the credentials amongst us, and then we asked him to avail himself to act as CEO, which he did. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we obviously are managing him in that position. Uh, so yeah, and you're working closely with we're him? We're working closely with him. He consults with us, sorry, from time to time in terms of his executive decisions. But what we did was we, we asked him to assemble a management team. All right. So there's been some restructuring done where we cleared certain lines. I mean, we had... The manner in which the organization was structured internally, it was quite flattened, you know. Uh, there was no proper delimination of duties and proper authority. So that's, so that's hence control. you said the structure was bloated. That's why you get to find pe people idling around yeah. there. So we, we restructured it, created a proper pyramid hierarchy system. He now operates with a management team internally where production is led by X, HR, Y, you know, finance. Yeah. Now, clearly, 
and naturally, like in any change process, uh, there's a resistance yes. to change. Because that was my next question to say, at what cost, though? What, how is this, as you dealing with these things, it comes with lots of cost, media attention and all of that. How are you uh, working together to make sure that in as much as you are having this attention that comes from outside, in terms of your plan that you have, and making sure that it gets communicated within the good structures. How are you working around that? Look, <clears throat> one, you must understand that we came in and found a system that is settled, that was self-destroying. All right? Now, let me unravel the system for you. So TV survived out of income coming from two income streams. Uh, largely from the, the churches who are buying uh, the airtime right. yes. and the space, all right? And secondly, so TV had a contract that was, I wouldn't even give it a contract status, but a contract or a working arrangement with TISO uh, agency who was selling the advertising space uh, and they would take a certain portion in terms of that contract of the revenue and, and basically channel the revenue to Soviet TV. That contract was badly managed by ourselves. That was one of the issues that we had with the CEO, that uh, the contract management aspects around that contract, the agency agreement with TISO, was not professionally right. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the lifeblood of, 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 the of, 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 of the channel including the, the, the ministry's uh, uh, income. Yes. Uh, we interrogated the contract and we came to the view that the, the channel was being undersold. Mm. Uh, also, House. and I'm not blaming Tiso here. Yes. Uh, uh, the blame squarely lies within the management team within the channel that they did not create the, the infrastructural capability to demonstrate the worthness of the product airtime that they were selling. In that they could not demonstrate scientifically what their viewership was at a certain given point in time. And today they can, mm. uh, because we brought in that capability. What uh, do you think uh, perpetuated that, or that might have was? I it, think it's a lies of free. It's a lies of free attitude. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a lies of free attitude. It's it's it's, it's mismanagement. Uh, uh, nothing else, nothing more. Uh, other people would beg to differ with me, but uh, I'm 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 quite convinced that it's 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 lies of free. Look, once you have an organization running without consequences being managed and misdemeanors on the part of staff members and no consequence management. You end up with the organization collapsing. So somehow it, it leads to, let's just put it this way, that if, I, if, if you have an organization that somehow doesn't seem to have a hierarchy that is respected and that has somehow channels that actually needs to be followed, it leads to that. If the board does not oversee the CEO, yes. and the CEO does not oversee his or her managers, and the managers do not oversee their staff members. The organization can't run on autopilot. Mm, this organization was on autopilot. Sometimes you give too much power to the very same staff sometimes. Yes, and then, it, was know, not, it was not led. It never had leadership. So under your, um, uh, you know, uh, your um, um, leadership now, what do, you, what do you want to see happen? Look, we have targets. We've given uh, your current acting CEO a mandate to say we need to run for 12 months. All right, we've given him 12 months. In 12 months, he's got to sort out SARS. All right, the, the financial year end of this organization uh, is June. And it starts July 1st. Why, I don't know, but it's tacked along municipalities. The years, yes. All right. So this organization has got to have an annual general meeting uh, after it has 
publish these audited reports every year. Which is still what you're working on? Still no, we have to get yes. to that. Yes. So it means by end of this financial year, Mr. Thibaut Taj has to produce audited reports. I mean, all of the things. Oh that yeah, he said. no, no, no. That's that's not negotiable. It's part of the job. That's not negotiable. Even if he does not get paid for that, uh, his integrity is on the line. So he's got an integrity to protect. Our integrity is on the line. We've got an integrity to protect. Yes. All right. Uh, I cannot continue to chair an organization that is not audited, that does not produce audited reports. When I go to the annual general meeting, I must be able to present an audited report to say, these are the financial affairs of this organization. Yes. So what it means is that by, 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 by June 2020, uh, the SARS issue and the SARS death must have been resolved. So, mm. so we've given him a plan to say, for you to be able to do that, you have to fix your production, all right? You got to increase your viewership. You got to bring new value into offering market. into the market so as to advertisers can begin to associate with you and you can sell more, more space and generate more income and pay SARS and be able to take care of the organization. And he's been given the responsibility to reduce his costs. Mm. I'll give so, you an example. So, All right. We've asked him questions like, why are you sitting at Deep Kloof and you're sitting at Villagasa Street? So you need to match the team. It's costing you more money. So, uh, so now, I, I think this is very important because when, whenever, I think we, we've seen a lot of uh, drama unfolding on the media and all of that. And it might have, I think, to a lot of staff members caused panic as well. And, 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 and people, I mean, I'm, I'm also affected, if I might put it that way as well here, uh, to put that disclaimer aside. So what would be your message to, especially the, the people mostly affected, which is your Soweto TV staff, but at the same time to the members of the community as well, just to be able to maybe lay it out for us to be able to understand. There is no witch hand on our side. I said it before and I'll say it again. I said it at the Christmas party. Even if we are bloated, we would like to keep every staff member that is there because we believe this brand is growing. I mean, if you look at where broadcasting is going with the digital migration, uh, it is clear that when we succeed in our plans, you you might be running a way to TV with a sporting channel, a musical channel, a, a gospel channel, maybe so you four or five channel. Yes. So you you obviously going to need you going to need you need, you staff need, more, you need more staff. So and within the well current framework, staff though. yes, within the current framework, you may look bloated, but in terms of where you are going in the next eighteen months. You are actually understand. Understand. Because there won't be, like now, because there is so now much. Now, the issue is, for me, the issue is the current staff members that are sitting at Soweto TV, are they aware where Soweto TV is going? Are they preparing themselves in terms of the vision and development? And, yes, yes. So, my, my message to, 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 to them is that if we can stop. These uh, dog cat fights, this cabalism and factionalism that exists within the organization and the politicking, and begin to focus on the business of the channel and our own individual careers, I think that is where the challenge lies in terms of securing ourselves. There is no one in the world, Mr. Liet, who would actually give you job security. Do not allow anybody to lie to you. Mm. Job security. It's about yourself. You remember the old saying by your own father and mother, you probably got told this, I was told this when I grew up, that you are, your own, you are the architect of, of your, your own, own destiny. destiny yes. That's my answer to, to Soweto TV. That, you see, there is a change process and a vision that has been put forth by the current leadership. Uh, the question is, are they buying into it? 
or resisting it. If you resist it, you get crushed. If you buy into it and support it, possibilities are you will survive. Uh, mm. I cannot speak. I don't own Soviet TV. Yes. I'm here for a short space of time. Uh, I probably will not be with you guys after your AGM. Uh, personally, if you ask me, do I still want to be there? Answer no. So because of maybe the, 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 the challenges that you had to encounter? No, 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 no. The problem is, Mr. Lieto, you know the problem with community organizations is that uh, there's too much talk and too much politicking and less... And less work. And less work. And yeah. I'm a business person. I don't have time for those things. And the thing is, I, I, I want to just for two minutes engage you on that point, uh, is that there, there seem to be a perception and idea that because it's, it's a charitable work, because it's community, because it's, it's, it's an organization that doesn't have more money, the, the drive around it as well and the approach is that people will always not give it their all approaching it. It's just that, no, this is a sort of TV, it's a small channel, so we don't expect much coming to come out of it. But that's a wrong, that's a wrong mentality altogether. You know, if you go into other countries like Canada, the US, uh, community channels of this nature, they compete with existing commercial channels. Yes. Some of them outsmart. It's about the management ethos that drive those communities. And creativity in. And exactly. And I wanted to talk to this issue that you raised that because it is a community channel, we're not supposed to give it much. I don't think that's correct. I said to you when we started that. You see, if we measure the health of our society and we want our society to be socially healthy, we need to strengthen our organs of civil society by ensuring that they are number one in, in corporate governance, number one in compliance, number one on work ethos and all those sort of things. Because these institutions create easy access for our ordinary people. Mm, mm, mm. We had auditions in January, eh? was it? No, so, December. It was uh, somewhere in October. Yeah, where we wanted to appoint the new faces of Soviet TV in October. I mean, you saw the kind of response that we had. Yes. The ordinary people that were there. And that day to day, on a day to day basis, those people would not have access into, into ETV, ENCA, SABC, you know, multi choice channels and all those sort of things. But because you are a Soviet based channel, when a young girl who lives next to Pimville wants to audition, he or she does not need money to go to town. They just walk Work. into a place where you are auditioning. Access and proximity is an advantage. They can walk into Villagas. Are you with me? Yes. Because you're right there, right in the community, and you can make things happen. That is why these institutions are important. And that is why we've got to protect They need to be well-run because they, they have to be well -run this is where someone run. else's career could be launched. Yes, that's where you can prepare probably the next uh, guy who's going to be delivering a show like uh, Trevor, Trevor Noah, Noah does in the U.S. You don't know, you might be producing talent that would be going to that level. That is why we have to protect these institutions. Are you with me? Yes. So we have to give them our best. That is why, for example, I mean, we serve in this board and we don't get paid a cent and we don't complain and we don't worry. Mr. Mulife is expected to serve as CEO and we don't pay him a cent. That is why to be attacking uh, him uh, at the level at which other people are doing, it's quite irresponsible. Because we're taking a person who is self-made entrepreneur, who does not need this, he's quite busy in his other operations. operations. And this board has been able to, I wouldn't use the word blackmail, but we've been able to appeal to his social conscience to give this challenge the best of his time. And he's doing so. And here we are in our pull-down syndrome. Instead of appreciating the good work that the young man does, what do we do? We seek to destroy. So then, you see, this is the, that is my last question to you, Nandad. There seem to be 
a problem when it comes to organizations, especially that are black run, or uh, let me put it maybe in the townships, where we have a lot of those inefficiencies, we have a lot of mismanagement of funding and all of that. Uh, is that is the, do you want to see that end with Soweto TV, where things are run properly, and then so that they can, they can become a much more functioning machine? No, it's going to be a functioning machine. When we deliver it to the AGM, we're going to be de we are basically turning it around. It's beginning to be a functioning machine. And the community can also only wait and see then, I guess. Well, uh, it's only time that will tell and space that we're given. Uh, and that is why when I, and I issued that press release, and uh, I mean, ICASA has, has, has the responsibility to oversee the work that we're doing, whether are we doing it to the best of our community, I mean, to the best of, 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 our, our, ability. of our abilities for the benefit of the community. Uh, and I'm saying, uh, they be the judge, they will judge. Uh, yes. We're giving it the best shot. Obviously, like I say in that earlier, when, when, when you bring about change, uh, you become unpopular. It, it, it comes with the pack. And change is not conformity. So now, uh, Chair, um, I'm just going to conclude this here by, by saying that, by just asking you this question, though, what do you think would be the most eminent action that is required, especially from staff and everyone else, to get behind the board and make sure that everything else is done properly? I'm asking, and I will say it again, if staff could begin to roll up their sleeves in whatever department that they are working in, let them be the best in whatever that they are expected to do. If you are a cameraman, be the best cameraman. If you are the person responsible for interviewing, be the person, be best at what you do. I had a, a, a small sting with your head of production, Mr. Mandla, uh, in, in January. Where M Mr. Mantla, no one, no one actually in the office can pronounce his name. His surname is very difficult. And what's his surname, by the way? N Ngeget, something yeah, like okay. that. Yeah. Menadem Changan. So I don't want <laughs> to risk uh, uh, messing up with his, his surname. His surname. At least I get accused of being tribalist. I had a small sting with him in January, uh, uh, at the beginning of the month. Yes. Uh, the Kimberley experience, where a cameraman was, was was booked was booked accredited and didn't show up and could not show up yes. and did not come to work yes let's put it that without way. he was absent without leave and, and 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 we said without an important footage now 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 for me this is the kind of uh, inexcusable behavior which a channel of our kind does not need. Because that event happens on that specific time. No one will, will delay it for us, and no one will postpone it for us, for him to come back from being absent without leave to come and do his work. Yeah, because in some of these things you don't recover. You don't. You're not given. An, you're not afforded an opportunity to, to recover. From you have it. one shot at it. Yes. So what I would say to staff is that behavior of this kind is not required. You are as good as your last script and be best at it. You know, on Christmas, at the Christmas party, your acting CEO said something very profound. He said, "By the way, when you hold your DSTV." At remote. remote. There's no way where the numbers are saying community channel, uh, commercial channel. Yes. Your channel 251 is 251. And 403 is 403. It's and Super Sport is 201, 202. It doesn't say Super Sport. It doesn't say Mzansi Magic. It says 161. You all operate on the same. You are all operating on the same platform on the same bar. No one is going to be judging you. Your final client, your end user, does not judge you on the basis that you are a commercial or a, a community channel. They don't know that. They're not interested in that. They want to press 251 and see 
what they got to see and enjoy what they see. So what I would say to staff is that you don't have to behave like a community channel. You don't need to. So it's the change of mindset and right? everything. If happens. you have to be at work 8 o'clock, and that is your conditions of service, be at work at 8 o'clock. Mm. I mean, it's as simple it's as simple that. simple as that. Unfortunately, we run out of time, but I so wish that we could tell this discussion forward. Hopefully, before you leave, we'll actually get to sit down with you and then you know, have another conversation, part two of this conversation. Sure, you're welcome. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you.